guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And the first one is titled "Apartment Complex Removed Property from My Apartment and Changed the Locks Over a Month Before My Lease Termination Is Done." DeKalb County, Georgia. I want to be done. Is this grounds for terminating my lease early? We had two months left on our lease. They wanted three months rent to cancel early. So obviously we're not going to pay extra to cancel early and instead gave our notice that we weren't renewing so we could keep the apartment for the next two months as extra storage and to hang out in every now and then, because I work close by. We moved most of our stuff out of the apartment but left a few things that we needed to clean it, most importantly a relatively expensive vacuum cleaner. In between the time that we moved most of our stuff out, three weeks ago, and yesterday, they entered the property, changed the lock, took the vacuum cleaner, and took apart parts of the stove, all without any warning or notice. My wife drove over an hour out of her way to get the vacuum cleaner, only to be locked out of the apartment after the housing office had closed. I drove there the next day to figure out what happened, they said, oops, we thought you left, and unlocked it to let me in. When I got in, the vacuum cleaner was gone, and the stove had been taken apart for cleaning. I've reread the lease agreement and I don't meet any of their requirements for being in default or abandonment. All I want to do is terminate the lease and clean my hands of this problem. The management company has been rude to us, slow on maintenance, and just overall an unreasonable hassle to work with, and we just want to be done. Terminating the lease would at the very least save us from paying half of October's rent, $1,680 a month, $700 for the part of October that we still would owe and probably $150 or so in utilities, but hopefully since they violated their part of the lease, I'd be able to get September's rent back as well. What can we do? Edit. Thank you all for such helpful replies. I'm writing a letter to hand in to management, I'll probably post it here first to have an extra pair of eyes glance over it. Update. Great news everyone. After receiving my letter and talking with their attorneys, the apartment complex completely admitted fault, admitted to their damages, and actually ended up paying us more than we asked for, in addition to waiving the end of lease walkthrough and just giving us our deposit back. The only context you need is that section 10.5 of the lease agreement states that the apartment complex is not liable for any of my losses unless it's due to negligence on their part. They are paying us the equivalent of almost $3,000, and I definitely owe you guys thanks for the advice and guidance from the initial post. Thanks so much, you guys really helped us out. The next one is titled, Neighbors below moved my security camera out of view and then placed a cloth over it. Hello, I live in Massachusetts, US. My neighbors below have been terrible to live with. They had previously had friends slash customers shackled up in our basement who ended up stealing a bunch of our stuff. We suspect they are dealing drugs. There have been dozens of people coming and going since they have been here. It was supposed to be a woman and her two kids. The two kids are long gone and now it is just her, her boyfriend, and another man. Our landlord said he was happy with the cameras as those below have been unruly and difficult. Re. The cameras. We have set up five total cameras, the only one they have messed with is the one facing the basement door which also faces their door since they are next to each other. This particular camera has been there for quite while and they even saw us install it. The man below, who is not on the lease, said a camera good idea when he saw us. This and the other cameras are not something new. What does the law say in this case? We installed the cameras to watch for thieves and no longer feel safe in our own home. We do not have any signs saying that the property is being watched. The cameras are not hidden and are in plain sight. We do have no trespassing signs. Thanks for any help. Edit. This is a two-family house. The cameras face the front door, porch pirates, the mutual hallway, the driveway, the yard, and the garage and half the yard. Edit 2. The people downstairs do not have access to the feeds. Edit 3. One of their friends moved the camera by using the end of a rake to physically push the camera out of view then placed a cloth over it. Update. Hello, all. First, I would like to apologize for not replying back when I posted. I was on vacation in an area with little to no service and I did not think it would have blown up as it did. When I came back home, I found the camera was crooked but no cover. I fixed it back up and went to the police station. I spoke with the officers, and they said since it was not broken, they could not do anything about it. I showed them the feed and they immediately said, Oh, no, you can't see anything, yeah, they cannot move your cameras. 
If your neighbors act up again, just call us. I did not tell my neighbors because I want nothing to do with them. They saw the cameras back where it was originally and have done nothing to block or move it. They are due to leave at the end of the month, thank God, and the renovation and massive cleaning can begin. This in Massachusetts, US. The next one is titled. Wife's car totaled in driveway. What should I do? Some guy totaled my wife's car, as well as my neighbor's truck among other things. He was uninsured driving his mother's car while intoxicated. Her insurance is still proving they are liable. Our full coverage insurance, we bought this 2014 Hyundai Santa Fe in October, has offered to pay off the car and said that his mother's insurance would give us 1000 back for the deductible which we wouldn't have to pay. So, we would get 1000 and have our car paid in full if we went with that. Otherwise, we wait and see what the mother's insurance says. Which option should I choose? Also, do I have grounds to sue? We put more than 1k for the down payment and don't have the money to make up the down payment for a new car. So we are out the rest of the down payment plus the few months we have paid on the car. Don't huff air duster and drive. Update. I posted a couple weeks ago about some clown totaling my wife's car while in our driveway. We have full coverage insurance plus gap. We chose to go with our insurance rather than wait on the clown's mom's crappy insurance. It is now time to make a payment on the totaled car. Our insurance is going to pay off the car but there is still some red tape to figure out before they pay out. Should we make the payment knowing that we will not see that money again? Or should we skip the payment knowing that the car will be paid off in full soon? The next one is titled. Don't walk on your property. You got it. This one goes back to the previous neighborhood our family lived in. It was a really nice quiet horseshoe shaped street, but it had no sidewalks. When my wife and I would walk the dogs and our kids, we would have to walk in the street. This was not a problem unless a car came and we would have the kids step aside into the grass to stay out of the street while the car passed. The neighborhood was built in the 80s and many residents are original owners. Mostly nice but of course we have some nasty humanoids among them. One neighbor in particular seems to always have to say something mean when we go by. She is a deacon at the church my family goes to and is the type to be religious for face value only. One day in particular she yelled at us for allowing our kids to step in her grass, while avoiding a car in the road, and I told her that they were just stepping aside until the car passed. She got overly angry and started spraying a hose at us and screaming like a banshee. We hurried the kids away and told them that they did nothing wrong and from now on we will walk on the other side of the street. About two weeks later, her and her husband got a new shed installed at their house and had to have the property surveyed for it. As I drove by, I noticed something. The front property boundary was about 10 feet back from the road. The houses on their side of the street all day a little farther back. I had a friend who does surveying come out and do our property and sure enough our boundary was about 3 feet from the road. We did some digging through the archives at City Hall and found that the neighborhood was permitted and designed to have a sidewalk that ran the length of the horseshoe on her side of the street. The 10 feet right of way was designed to have curbing, grass, and then a sidewalk. So, I did what any sane person would do in this situation, and I contacted the township to have a sidewalk put in. The township notified all residents of the request and held an open hearing for it during a township meeting. Most of the neighbors showed up in support of it, most didn't care, but that nasty woman showed up to protest it and raise all hell. A month later they began excavating for the sidewalk and when they got to her house, she had planted a big landscape piece with flowers and shrubs and a tree right in the way. The township told her to remove it, she didn't, they fined her and removed it themselves. The best part of the story is that two weeks after the sidewalk was finished and in, we listed our house and moved to another neighborhood. She still makes nasty remarks to my mother at church, and we drive by her house while visiting our old neighbors every now and then. The last one is titled. The results of my yard work. I posted this in another subreddit, but it was suggested I also try it here. So here it is. First, let me say that I am not 100% certain this is pro-revenge, because I don't necessarily think of myself in that league. I live in a consolidated county. That means that the city and county governments merged some years back, ostensibly to reduce administrative and infrastructure costs. This is important, because services like fire, police, utilities, and trash pickup are now managed by former county officials, and not the city officials. Many of these services are also much more inefficient, and some services have been outsourced to private companies. My municipality outsourced trash and yard waste pickup a few years ago, 
and the two companies who now do those collections are woefully inadequate, and their services cost more than when the city or county did it. They both have similar sets of rules what can be put out for collection, take fewer types of waste away, and no longer come two days a week as the city once did, but now only come one day a week. We're all paying more money for less service. Now that the background is done, here's the story. I did some yard work over the course of a couple of weekends last summer, cutting some limbs, trimming some shrubbery, and cutting down a dead tree in my backyard. Knowing what the rules are for how much yard waste, limbs, leaves, and such can be put out, I bagged everything that was supposed to be bagged, filling up three of them. Things like leaves and small clippings, weeds, and such. The paper bags for yard waste from the big box home improvement stores are what they require, so I use those. I just fill them halfway up so as to not make them too heavy for the waste collectors, even though there are no written weight restrictions. However, if a bag is too full, they will knock it over to spill out the contents, so they then don't have to pick it up. I cut the larger limbs down to under 4 feet in length, or they wouldn't be picked up. Anything at all they can do to get out of picking something up, they will do. And they almost always leave a horrendous mess behind when they do pick things up. The pile put out for collection is not allowed to be any wider than 10 feet, nor any deeper or higher than 5 feet, nor may it contain any piece longer than 4 feet. All bags must be placed in a row, no more than 3 feet away from the limb pile. My pile was maybe 4 inches longer than the 10 feet, and only because of the tiny ends of the limbs, smaller than a toothpick, hanging out of the pile. The pile was no higher than 3 feet, and no deeper than 4 feet. In other words, it fell within the size limits, except for a few twigs with leaves. I also had the three bags, each about half full of clippings and leaves, all lined up exactly as required, and about two feet away from the main pile. They were scheduled to come on a Tuesday, but when I got home from work that afternoon, it was all still there. There was a pre-printed notice on my door that my pickup exceeded the proscribed size limits, and the note said that I would be required to either pay a $250 oversize load fee or reduce the size of the pile by half to make it fit into the limit. This is where the revenge comes in. I had the next two days off, so the next morning, bright and early, I got out the hedge trimmers. I trimmed the ends of the pile back to exactly 9 feet in length. After carefully laying those trimmed bits on top of the pile, I went to the backyard, where the limbs I had not trimmed up the week before were stacked for the following week's pile and found four long, fairly straight limbs. I removed all the smaller limbs and leaves from these limbs, ending up with four moderately straight poles, each about seven feet long. I marked one-foot intervals on each pole in fluorescent orange paint, and stuck them in the ground, out at the curb in the front yard, at the corners of a rectangle exactly five feet wide and ten feet long. Got out the surveyor's tape, bright pink plastic tape used to mark property corners, and tied it onto and around the stakes at the height of 5 feet. This established a visual outline of the volume 1 was required to stay within. I made absolutely sure that everything in the pile was completely inside the poles and below 5 feet in height. This required adding almost two-thirds of the remaining pile in the backyard to the stack out front, to bring it up to 4 feet 6 inches in width, 4 feet 6 inches in depth, and 9 feet 6 inches in length. And no pieces longer than 46 inches. The pile was almost twice as much material as before. This included some small logs, up to 4 inches in diameter, also each 46 inches long. The limit is 5 inches diameter, all within the limits of 5 feet by 5 feet by 10 feet the waste company mandates. I carried each of the three bags of clippings to the backyard and filled each of them up as much as possible, while still being able to fold over the tops and staple shut each bag. I also included small, 8 inches to 10 inches sections of the ends of larger limbs, for added weight. The bags were now completely filled and weighed more than twice what they had before. I had to use the hand truck to get them out to the curb, they were so heavy. Oh, and all the extra clippings I had generated, filled up two more bags, so the total was now five bags. The company limit. I then went inside, called the company, and very nicely asked that they come to pick up my yard waste, since they had not done so on Tuesday. They agreed to send out a truck and crew and told me I would have to pay the fee. Come on then, I told them. They soon arrived and happened to be the same crew that normally comes to my neighborhood. I pulled a 25-foot Stanley tape measure from my pocket, and asked them to measure the poles, to confirm that the space was within the required limits. 
They did so, and agreed the pile was not oversized, and proceeded to spend the next two hours manually loading it all onto their truck. Oh, and it took both of them to manhandle each of those bags into the back of the truck too. I told them, very nicely and with a smile, that I knew what 10 feet was, pointed to the fence where it was marked with orange electrical tape, and thanked them for coming to pick up my yard waste. The two tired, sweaty waste disposal guys just groaned, got in their truck, and drove off. There was no extra fee added to my bill for that month. Never has been since. Now, I know they got paid for their time, and I know that I had to do a lot of extra work on my day off, but since last July, I have not once ever had them leave so much as a single leaf on the ground in front of my house. They had to actually do some hard work, with me standing there in shorts, smiling and drinking cold Gatorade while they were sweating. Thanks for listening.